What's that expression again? Time flies when you're having fun? I can't believe it's already been a month since I switched from Windows to Linux, and to be more specific, Fedora. Now, this week has been big for Fedora. Fedora 42 has officially dropped. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I was a bit nervous to update the distro because I've heard a lot of things could happen regarding stability, things might break, and just having past trauma from updating Windows in general, I just have a fear of updates. I'm one of those people who puts off updates as long as possible, whether it was on Mac OS or with Windows. I think a lot of this has to do when I worked previous jobs where a lot of software depended on my job and IT had to test those software with the updates for Windows or for Mac before we were allowed to do those updates. So I have a bit of a panic response whenever I see an update as an option. But I have a few different laptops and I decided to take the risk on one of my laptops where I only use it for web browsing. This is one of my ThinkPads. It's my ThinkPad L390 to be exact. It's not the highest in specs. And if something goes wrong, I will just do a fresh install, no big issues. So in order to update to Fedora 42, it was quite simple. I was going to do a terminal option, but I think they said online that's a bit risky and not to do that and to go directly through the store. I use GNOME or GNOME, I don't really care how you want to pronounce it. And I went to the app store and went to the update section and chose to update directly to Fedora 42. Now the update took about 20 minutes. My computer was quite warm in the end after the update, but nothing went wrong. Everything went smooth. I didn't have anything crashing. I didn't notice any cosmetic issues. Now there are updates to different work environments. I think KDE had a huge update. I'm sure GNOME had some updates as well, but I decided to do something I've never done before. I actually went to the release notes to know about the updates. I think since switching to Linux, I've become a lot more curious about computers in general. I've gotten very curious about certain components, certain software, and I actually wanted to know about the release notes. This is new for me. So I went to the actual release notes in the Fedora documentation, and a lot of it, to be honest, went over my head. I am not a tech expert and I needed to have it kind of spoon fed to me to understand what was going on. Luckily, there was an article on fedoramagazine.org and that was very straightforward to really understand globally what was going on with the update. I'll link the article down below. And in that article, I saw that there was a desktop environment called Cosmic and that got my attention because the name Cosmic, I mean, doesn't that sound awesome? <laughs> so I decided to install the Cosmic desktop environment to test it out. Um, I'm somebody who started with GNOME, I really liked it, but I wanted to give other desktop environments a chance. So after installing it again on my side computer, um, I really loved it. It did take a little bit of tinkering in the display options to be able to see things easily. I had to scale up the interface. I also changed some spacing elements. I enlarged the dock at the bottom or the app drawer, app tray, whatever it wants to be called. And honestly, it's super easy for me to see and navigate as far as accessibility is concerned. I really like that it highlights the windows in the display, especially since I'm using dark mode a lot of the times, I can't tell the difference of which window I'm actually using and to be able to move them around my workspace has been game changing. I've only been using Cosmic for the past couple days since I updated to Fedora 42, but globally, I really like the experience and I think it's my perfect balance. It does look very Mac OS like as far as having the app tray at the bottom, the menu at the top, and being able to customize each element, the roundedness of the corners, I mean, I'm somebody who likes rounded windows and elements. I just like the visual appeal to it and the option to have squared or rounded, change the font styles. I really appreciate the 
limitless choice almost of fonts I can put on the interface, how I can space those fonts, even making the window hints font a lot bigger when I'm hovering over things so that way I can see it has been great. Accessibility wise, I have no complaints. Now the major differences of switching to a different desktop environment, of course, is the aesthetics, but also the layout of the menus itself, the app store, and just how things are organized and the logic changes from desktop environments. And I know a lot of people prefer KDE. There is a lot of customization as everyone has made me aware. There are limitless settings and options. And if you're somebody who really likes to tinker with all the aspects of your desktop environment, I highly recommend going to KDE directly. I am somebody who doesn't need too many options. I kind of like to have something work out of the box. I don't want to do too much customization, but I do need some customization when it comes to accessibility needs as being somebody who is very visually impaired. And I do like certain options, but I don't want a million options, if you know what I mean. So globally, switching to Fedora 42 plus, changing my desktop environment has been a huge change. But one of the biggest changes I had this week was that I actually ordered a new laptop. Now, many of you may or may not know, I've been saving up for the past year since starting my channel, and I really needed a new laptop or a desktop. I was debating on both for the longest time, and I finally caved and got one out of necessity more than anything. I've been primarily managing my channel on an eight-year-old ThinkPad, and it's been great. It's worked as a great workstation, but it does have some limitations when it comes to video editing. And recently I've been getting into some Linux gaming. Long story short, I wanted to focus on buying from a company that had Linux first in mind with all the configurations, with all the components working with my specific needs. Now I narrowed it down to about three companies and I wanted to buy a European made computer I know all the components are not made in Europe, but the elements are assembled in a European country. I decided to go with Slimbook. Slimbook is based in Spain and they had the configurations and the hardware that met my needs. I did hesitate to go with Tuxedo Computers. I was hesitating for a desktop for a bit, but I decided to go the laptop route because just in case I wanna travel about and I kind of like the dual screen setup. My desk is very small. I don't have much space to have two monitors, but I do have enough space for a laptop and an external monitor. So long story short, I went with Slimbook. I really liked their creative computers. So these computers are configured, have components dedicated more towards the creative person. So for video editing, of course, for gaming and just all of the options available really met my needs. I'm somebody who wanted a specific amount of RAM. I wanted also a specific amount of memory, but I didn't want too many options when it came to the CPU and GPU options. I really liked that they gave me the options that would be optimized for what I wanted to do without getting a bit lost in the sauce. If I have too many options for anything, whether it's my desktop environment or configuring a computer, I really have trouble making a decision and I end up researching too much and getting in a little research loop and just not doing anything in the end. I don't know if it's just me or if there's a lot of people like this, let me know down below. But I really want something kind of semi-configured but also giving me some liberty with certain elements. I also needed something that had a card reader. This is getting more and more difficult to find. I know that Apple brought back card readers because a lot of creatives, we need it for our cameras to quickly pop it in and not have to carry dongles around everywhere. I really can't even stand to look at a dongle for anything. Apple really ruined me from that and I just don't wanna hear the word dongle. I don't wanna see a dongle. I don't want stuff hanging off my computer. I don't wanna do that to do my basic workflow. So finding hardware that had enough ports, had a card reader, this really fit what I needed. I also really liked their reactive support, having real people talk to me, and it was a really pleasant purchasing experience. 
it came really fast. It didn't take weeks to build and configure. It took less than a week, to be honest. I think I ordered last Wednesday and I got it Tuesday or Wednesday this week. So it happened really fast and they put the exact distro that I asked for, Fedora, of course, but I had to update it after because of course Fedora 42 decided to drop when my computer was shipping. The advantage of ordering a computer already configured with my specific distro was that all of the drivers, everything else was already configured for me. Even though I heard from a lot of you that newer versions of NVIDIA GPUs and the drivers specifically work a lot better than the older ones, I can confirm that this is true. I found this also with specific software. I use DaVinci Resolve to edit my videos and the software works a lot better with my new GPU and the drivers work a lot more seamlessly. Again, before, if you remember in my previous videos, I was having um, a bug with my integrated CPU as well as the dedicated GPU and I had to choose between one or the other. Now I can use both seamlessly because Slimbook already configured them to work together with my distro and I didn't have to think about it and have a headache over it. I think some things, um, are good to know and good to go through for sure for Linux. But as somebody like myself, I kind of just want things to work. And that's a habit of using things in the past, of course, and being kind of babied through the process of using certain operating systems. I'm glad I know how to use it. I'm glad I know how to install drivers and go through the process of troubleshooting and things like that. I'm still doing that with older laptops that I have around and that's a good exercise to go through but sometimes when you need something to work for your job you just want it to work straight away and when i'm investing in a new computer i just want it to work at least for a little bit on its own when i open it out of the box i'll do a longer term review on slimbook and the creative model to be precise and so far so good so new fedora 42 new desktop environment and new computer. Lots of big things have happened the past month when switching to Linux, and I'm really excited to see where I go on this journey. Again, I will keep you posted and thank you so much for watching and see you soon.